In today's video, I'm going to show you a few different high voltage insulators. These insulators that you're looking at right here, I found laying around at an abandoned military base. Now, there's a couple of different types. Now, these are all made out of either ceramic or porcelain that you're looking at. Sometimes it's made out of glass from years ago. The reason why they don't really use glass anymore that much is because glass, even though it's a very good insulator, it does have a problem with condensation on the surface, which would allow the high voltage an easier path to find its way to ground. This one right here is designed to sit on top of a pole. The wire would lay right across here like that. Once the high voltage wire is in position like that, This one right here is rated around 10,000 volts. You see the ceramic has to have that nice glazed finish. Otherwise, the ceramic, if it didn't have that glazed finish, would be extremely porous and water would seep into it and you'd have all sorts of problems with the high voltage making it to ground. So by having this with a very nice glaze like this, when it rains, the water will sheet off like you see there, it beads and runs off. What would happen if you look at the bottom, the way it's designed, there's ribs. And the purpose of these ribs is when the water runs off, it'll drip. Each one of these ribs makes it that much harder for the high voltage to find its way to the utility pole to ground. Now, as the water drips off the edge, it'll hang off the edge. And if there's salt, which is very bad, if you live near the ocean, you may have salt spray land on top of the insulators. It creates a really easy path when this is damp for the high voltage to find its way around. You may hear sizzling. You would see the corona at night, maybe a little bit of glowing underneath the insulator. That's because the high voltage is trying to find its way and it's actually making it to ground. If there's a lot of salt, what can happen, the voltage can flash right over. You'll see a spark that'll go from top to here. It'll just wrap right around. That's if there's a lot of salt on here. But if there's only rainwater, the only problem that you usually see that would happen is a little bit of corona trying to make it across these gaps. You wouldn't see a flashover like that. Now, you also see that not only are these spaced, but they're also stepped in a fashion that makes it that much harder for it to jump to this rod. This rod right here unscrews out of the insulator like that. There's only a very small area between the top of this and there. It feels like it's about three-eighths of an inch and it doesn't take that much for ceramic to prevent the electricity from making it across. Sometimes I've read that in that area at the bottom you can have a burn through which would allow the high voltage to go straight through here through there and into the rod, but luckily that doesn't happen too often. That back. This one here is a smaller version. This is made in 1954. It's got a nice glazed finish also. So as water lands on it, the water will sheet right off. See, it runs right off there. And then It'll drip off the edge and the same way with this one. Because this one is rated at a lower voltage, you can see there's less ribs compared to that one. You don't need as many of these ribs and the spacing is only going to be one gap to here. And then that same rod, which let me unscrew this other one, should be in here too, also standard. Yeah, so that would go in here also, standard. Because the voltage is lower, it's going to have a harder time jumping from here to here and then here to there, unless there's salt on it the same way. Usually if there's power outages after a windstorm and you live, live near the ocean, you're going to see a lot of utility trucks out there with pressure washers, and what they'll be doing is spraying all the insulators off to remove all the salt. If there's a lot of salt on the insulator, 
it would result in a lot of power loss because it, there'd be many of these insulators covered in salt, all of them losing power, and that would result in possible power outages. So they would go out in their trucks with pressure washers and spray off all the salt on the insulators. <clears throat> this one here is a much larger one. This would connect up to a pole on this end, and you could have your wire connected to this position here, high voltage wire. This one's rated like 15,000 volts. And you would see there's a lot of the ribs again. The voltage would have to make it jump from here to there to there to there. With the salt, it would make it much easier to get across, but if it's only rainwater, you may only see just a little bit of corona trying to jump after a rainstorm. Once it gets to here, it would then have to flow all the way to here to make it out. Now, if you needed more than 15,000 volts, then what you can do is you can connect a bunch of them in series, like you see here. Each one of these is rated 10,000 volts, and you can see it says 1969. This would go onto your pole, and Clearly, this would be a lot of voltage connected to this point right here if there's four of these lined up. So the insulators you see here, there's four at 10,000 volts, which is 40, so probably this was safely carrying 25, 30,000 volts because you don't push it to the limit of the insulators, usually you go a little less. This right here is just used for spacing high voltage wires. It's one piece of ceramic. Your wires would be secured, and then they would be tied in the same way to keep them spaced apart so they can't touch each other, they're short out. This is also from the 60s. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you for watching.